Um, yeah, so, did I do any Googling? I did not Google it, but I did YouTube it. YouTube it? I YouTubed it. I YouTube. I just, it's the, my, Paxton is German, so I try to sound German every now and then. Beauty. People off. So, so, I YouTubed it, and um, I got to understand uh, a little bit, but um, I really mean a little bit. Because I did it like two minutes while you were texting me, like, where are you? Why are we starting? When you were saying, <laughs> when, you, when you were saying, and I, I'm thinking to myself, this is not Disney. We don't start on time. This is, <laughs> this is not a school bus. We don't pick up on time. This is kind of... All right. So, so uh, I got about five minutes of a 15 minute video. So um, that's all I got. Yeah, so if I, I were to... Why do I feel like I just went to school and I'm turning in an essay? I'm sorry, but, you yeah. know, the game, the game was on. I didn't really... Okay, go ahead. <laughs> so if I were to look at the clinical side of what adjustment disorder is in the big book of mental health, it is a behavioral or emotional change that is unusual <laughs> for a normal circumstance. So if I were to put it in my terms... Basically, something happens that's not really out of the norm, but your coping skills basically go poof, and you can't cope. And then right. your behaviors and emotions are more intense or more um, disabling than usual. Basically, you get completely thrown off, and you're like, what the heck just happened? Okay. So when a person goes through that, what's the normal reaction of the people around them when they're going through that? Uh, shock, really, because um, it can happen with anything. So, um, for example, say that you get in a near car accident and you're, it wasn't like a near death experience, but like you almost got in a fender bender and then all of a sudden like your regular coping skills just kind of yeah. go out the window and then you're like hyper anxious about driving. Like anytime you even think about getting in a car, you're crying and you're just like, what is wrong with me? It's really hard to describe to somebody this intense reaction, especially when it wasn't something like nearly getting killed. So adjustment disorder is under the umbrella of post-traumatic disorders in the big book of mental health. The thing that's different about this versus a PTSD situation is you didn't almost die. Okay. Or your life wasn't at risk. Got it. Okay, I got it. So the so, difference between... Go ahead. I'm sorry. So when somebody says that they have post-traumatic stress disorder related to um, abuse, um, being in the military, or um, just like getting raped, any of that kind of stuff, people can be like, oh yeah, that completely makes sense. When you say, I almost got in a car accident but I wouldn't have nearly died. It was just like a small fender bender. But I have no idea. I cannot cope. There's a big difference between how people are going to react to like, what the heck? And oh yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So if a person in that situation is not going to pretty much get the support that somebody with PTSD would get. Adjustment disorder is actually extremely common, um, but of course, nobody's ever heard about it. No one really has. You're not the only person who knows very little about adjustment disorder. And it's actually very minimally researched as a disorder because before 2014, they just kind of considered it as like, oh, this person can't cope, so we're just going to call it adjustment disorder. Now they're looking at it as a clinical illness that is actually debilitating and they're taking it more seriously and now finally doing the research necessary to appropriately treat the illness. So what, what would be some of, I know you touched on a little bit, but before I ask my second question, I want to ask this uh, as a review question. So what are some of the sympt symptoms? Did I just say that? <laughs> the symptoms. <laughs> the symptoms. I really just said that. So what are some of the uh, signs? <laughs> I don't know where that came from. I have just lost my tongue. <laughs> it is gone. 
So, so what are some of the signs uh, that a person is uh, being confronted with this uh, type of disorder that they can be mindful of? I just brought it up on my screen um, just so that I don't miss anything, but they're extremely vague because everyone's symptoms are different. And yes, Daughters Anonymous, the C Canadians use the DSM-5 the same as the United States. Yeah, we definitely do. So in the DSM, it says the diagnostic criteria is that you get emotional, emotional or behavioral symptoms in response to an identifiable stressor within three months of that stressor happening. And basically, it says your symptoms are not normal grieving or normal um, response to stress mm -hmm. and that they're intense and they impair your social, occupational, and other areas of your life. Okay. Super vague. Super vague. Yeah, that, yeah. So, so, so what do you, what do you get it, what are you gonna look for then? I, I'm trying to think right now, if, if, you're, if you're married to someone like that, or you, you know, that person you care for, how can you tell that they're going through this and it's not just an episode that will come and go and pass? Right. So what's different between adjustment disorder or just say going through an episode of just depression or an episode of anxiety is that there was a specific stressor that happened. So you can pinpoint that something stressful occurred. Okay. And then after that point, within a three month period, things seemed really off about that person. So that's really the only thing. Um, Cause you don't really know what to look out for. Cause lots of people just think, oh, the person just has anxiety or the person is just going through like a low mood because those can be associated or like matching symptoms. Right. But that's why adjustment disorder is so undertreated because nobody knows that they have to look out for a change in their coping in general. It's basically like a change in your coping has happened. Your usual coping skills go out the window. You're feeling really intense emotions and you're just like, I don't really understand why. Because this little thing happened, but it didn't really seem that bad. So why am I reacting like this? But to the person, it's a big thing per se. Because Absolutely. It's a it's affected their ability to cope, uh, uh, the woman or the man, or the, maybe even child, teenager. Mm -hmm. They're having a hard time coping because now they're more timid, afraid, scared even to do a given act that they would normally do before this incident happened. Right. The one thing about adjustment disorder, too, is they say typically it only lasts about six months. So it is a short-term <laughs> disabling thing. So it basically takes you like six months to re-regulate after that episode. Yeah. The problem is, if left untreated, one in five people can get adjustment disorder chronically so that it can last longer than that period, potentially forever. So I wonder if those numbers are actually worse because they have done so few research, like so little research, because there are people who just get stuck and then they don't know how to get out of that stuck. Okay. So, so if that's the case, are we looking at people that are supposed to be supportive, just saying, well, hey, look, you know, give it six months and, and you'll be better. Uh, they may not be really supportive. Or, or, or could a person who may be going through it think, okay, I just got to write this out, and then their coping skills will kick back in? Or will they need a measure of therapy sometimes? I, I'm just throwing all that out to you. Well, I think, think I think we need to be looking into therapy so people are not disabled for six months. That's yeah. the problem, is that these, these symptoms interfere negatively with one or multiple areas of your functioning. So whether that's just your coping style, your ability to work, your ability to just go outside and like take care of whatever business you need to take care right. of, because it is, it is a chunk of time that has messed with your ability to do your normal stuff. So their functioning has been been impaired. Yeah. But it can it can be chronically impaired uh, to some point is what you're saying. Correct. But it all was triggered by a certain event uh, that the coping skills were not able to help them regulate themselves to go through that event. You got it. Yeah. 
Yeah, because that's exactly what happened to me. Because that's why I know so much about adjustment disorders. Because I was diagnosed why, why with you it in January. Why, why, why are you messing up my show? I haven't got to you yet. Why you just do that to me like that? You, just, you know what? Then you take the show. I'm getting out of here. I'm going, I'm going for my <laughs> I can walk. Talk to myself for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Find it. Ever? What? Ever? I was getting to you. I really was. You better be glad I like you, man. You just totally. Just, <laughs> I just I just sidetracked it all. Just you gone. just fired me, and I don't even know how that worked when I'm the one running the company. I don't know. Okay, so 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 that was a that was a hard takeover from, from, from corporate at that point. Uh, I was gonna get to that, so I was yeah, whoa. Let me let me segue to that. So so how are you so experienced about uh, this particular? Wait wait no wait wait wait. I'll, I'll give it another leading question. Let me try something else. Let me try. Uh, wow. That you know, that's that's a lot of research that you've done in this area. What made you decide to go down this road and take an interest in adjustment disorder? Wait, I, I got another. I got another. Okay, one. I, got okay, another go. one. I get. <laughs> I really do have another. I've got a whole bunch of them that are up here. Okay, so I got another one. I got another. One. So, uh, has this been something that your your a family member or your boyfriend had to deal with? My boyfriend had to deal with me. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, I, I got a whole bunch of them I could go through. Okay, so so uh, so, how has your boyfriend been able to uh, to uh, help you with this? Uh, well, wait a minute, I can't. Well, hold on a second. Uh, you were dealing with this before you met him. Nope, no, I met okay. him into. Um, I've been with him for nearly two years. So this just happened. I just got a diagnosis of adjustment disorder January of this year. Oh, it's January. Okay, I got it mixed up. Okay, so uh, now that we threw that out there and you threw out what you threw out, let's do it all <laughs> nice and beautiful and professional. So, have you had to deal with this uh, disorder? Yes. Yeah. Oh, you can't give me one. <laughs> you can't give me one more to answer. What is that? kind of guest are you? Is that yeah. One more to answer. Yes. What was that? <laughs> What are you doing to me? First, you take over the show. <laughs> then I ask you a question, and you just give me a word word answer. Oh, man, this you know what that's like? You know what? Okay, seriously, you know what that's like? Hello, kind of woman. Uh, uh, so you know what that's like? That's like uh, that's like you and your boyfriend being on a date, and, and you guys are going out for the night, and he goes like, so you like the food? And you go like, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But what? if he's interrupting me eating food, well, it oh. won't be a one-word answer. So well, you, first, well, first, of, first of all, men do the opposite of what they don't want to have. So it, just when we're eating, we don't want to be bothered. You know we will do that when you're eating. By the way, yes. men will ask questions when a woman's eating. And it's like, if you did it to them, if you did it to us, we go like, I'm eating here. It's like, can't you, yeah. don't talk to me. But they'll, they'll go like, hey, so do you like the food? And you go like, mm-hmm. <laughs> Squirrel moment. Okay, back to what we were talking about. So, um, adjustment disorder mm -hmm. has been something that you've had to contend with. Mm -hmm. When did it happen to you? So, the incident in question. <laughs> the, the incident happened. <laughs> it's like, it's like well, all of a sudden, I'm watching and you're Sherlock Holmes, which you know, is like, <laughs> I'm waiting, telling me more. <laughs> so, the incident happened. Um, in uh, January 8th on a night shift of 2020. And I was diagnosed with adjustment disorder by a psychologist. I do believe it was January 22nd. I was able to get into somebody quite quickly because I was already off work because I just knew that I was not okay. And I had an inkling that it was likely adjustment disorder because... Hmm. I knew of adjustment disorder because I'd worked with people who had it. But until you've experienced your coping, just suddenly go poof. Wow. It's like a whole different world. It is weird. Okay. So I really want to delve into that. And we, we don't have all day to do that because, because you have to go to work and I don't, but what I was going <laughs> to, what I was going to, I just had to stick that in there. So what I was going to say is, so now, your coping mechanisms went by the wayside. Mm -hmm. You're at work as a nurse. Yes. Did that mean that all you could do was cry and not put sentences together? Does that mean that you were grouchy, angry, and lashing out? 
Was it all the above? What was it like? Well, with the moments that it happened, um, so what, what happened was I was working in the intensive psychiatry unit. We've got two different areas. And a woman screamed at me for three to three and a half hours. Very, very like verbal and emotionally abusive things which really is not that unusual for me, which sounds awful. But I mean, like within my line of work, there's a certain level right. of like, I mean, right. it's a reality for us. Okay. But there was something about the moment she threw her medications on the floor at me that something just went like, it felt like something switched and I, my fight or flight kicked in in a way it had never kicked in before. So I knew at that point we needed to put her into like her locked room and just make sure that she like, she had some space and that like the rest of the unit was safe and okay. We did that. And after that happened, my adrenaline just continued. It just did not stop. So initially I cried and it was very unusual for me. I don't cry at work and it just kept going. It, I just kept really? crying. And my wow. coworkers were like, are you okay? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> so I was able to do like the remainder of my shift. I, I just did whatever nursing duties I could. Like I would be able to take mini professional breaks to work with my other two clients. Cause it's in intensive psychiatry, we only have three. Right. And, but when I was in the nursing station and away from the patients, it was just waterworks and it, they just didn't stop. Wow. And, 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 you had already became familiar with adjustment disorder. You said from the people you work with was the expression you use. You don't mean your fellow nurses or do you mean? I mean, my patients. I work patients? with my patients. Yeah. And so you, you knew what it looked like when people were dealing with it. But only from a point of when they were in crisis. So when they're in hospital, they're in crisis. So that usually means that they're also having additional thoughts of suicide um, or they don't know what resources to look for to get better or they don't know why these things are happening to them for me i was like situation happens i'm not coping this is probably adjustment disorder and i was wow. right <laughs> wow so it wasn't it wasn't a panic attack I, that's what I thought initially. I thought initially it was a panic attack, but when it lasted for longer, so I thought, you know, if I go home, have a good night's sleep after my shift, um, give myself a couple days to kind of like um, recoup, then I'd be able to go back to work because it, it was my four day off block. The day before going back to work, I then had a very big panic attack. And so I was like, okay, so my body is telling me that. I'm feeling at risk. I'm feeling there's a threat. So I need to deal with this before I can go back. And shockingly to me, I didn't go back until September of 2020. How long of a period of time then? So January to September. So eight months, eight, months. eight, eight months. nine months. Yeah. And even that, it was a gradual back to work when I went in September. So I was only doing tiny blocks of shifts that gradually. So I didn't go back full time until October 27th. So that's a long time away from being like a full time nurse. No. Yeah. That's a lot. So emotionally though, what was it like for you when you went back that first day to week or period of time that you went the first seven days or so, what was it like over that stretch of time? The time when I, went, when I did the back, when you went back to work at the very beginning, after eight, nine months or there about September, what was, what did it, what were, what feelings were you going through when you got back? I was somewhat nervous. Um, I actually went through a treatment modality between March and August called exposure therapy, which meant that I put myself into anxiety provoking um, circumstances for like three or four days a week for months which included being in the hospital environment. So by that point, I'd already reduced my fight or flight. It was no longer kicking in. So going back, I was actually a little excited to be back with my coworkers and actually like doing the nursing skills because my fight or flight was no longer like on overdrive. Right. And when your, when your flight or, uh, or fight, I'm glad you didn't fight. 
<laughs> I'm glad I didn't fight either. That would be real bad. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, especially if you had the headband on and you had your, your ponytails. It's like, you know, you'd be like ninja nurse, ninja nurse. <laughs> I would have watched. I would have watched the camera footage of that for sure. Uh, <laughs> but if you if you to put on ninja clothes and start going through the hospital, that would have been pretty bad. You're getting some love on the screen there, uh, uh, telling that you were brave. Thank uh, you. And so so uh, your bravery. Uh, you went back. Mm -hmm. What did you come close to being triggered? Was there something? What 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 happened when you went back? Was there anything that triggered you or moved down that road? Was there anything in particular? There was. Nothing? There was like one guy. It was the first per time someone <clears throat> yelled at me since being back. That was like something that, like, I took home with me to a certain degree. But no, but I was fine. It was just something that I just needed to process. But when I first stepped foot inside, so in March, because we were in the middle of the pandemic, my occupational therapist, who was the one who did exposure therapy with me, did not want me at the hospital. So I just watched a lot of videos and things. So the first time I actually put my feet inside of the hospital was June of 2020. Okay. And I was only in the lobby of the hospital, nowhere near my unit. And my heart rate at just sitting down was 190, which typically <laughs> should be around 70 to 80. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I just said, wow. Yeah. Wow. So my, so my reaction when I first stepped in the hospital was very bad. And I actually needed to take a two week break after that because um, I just needed to take a step back and my occupational therapist and I agreed because yeah, that was a pretty intense reaction for sure. What, what was it like uh, at home and being at home? Um, in the beginning, it was really hard. So like for the first few months, it was extremely hard because I was just processing the fact like I felt like a failure. I felt like I should know what I'm supposed to do. And this dysregulated thing was so unusual for me, especially this thing kept going in my head. Like I've seen worse. I've dealt with worse. I've been physically attacked. This is nothing in comparison. Like what is wrong with me? So that within itself was a lot to process. But as time went on, um, just all the hard work I put in my my occupational therapist said I was a little famous around the office because I was one of the least avoidant clients that they've ever had <laughs> that I, oh. her, her manager or her supervisor constantly asked about me because I was working so hard to get oh. back to work and to feel oh. better. So yeah, that was, that was a relief. Cause it was like, okay, so I am putting in the work. This is the time it's taking but I'm doing all of the right steps. So that was really comforting for me. Good for you. Good for you. Awesomely, seriously, good for you. How was it at home for your boyfriend? Oh, poor guy. I mean, I was so grumpy. That that was the other thing. Like, I'm not like this, I'm not this really grumpy person. I was so no. reactive. <laughs> I was so reactive. <laughs> I was so reactive. It was like, I felt bad for the guy. And I still do sometimes because like I've improved like so much. But I mean, when you get a knock like of certain types of mental illness, there's like a certain degree that you're still going to have to cope with and kind of like have to force yourself to work a little bit harder to not um, be dysregulated or have that extra anxiety or those angry, frustrated bursts kind of thing. So it's still a work in progress for sure. <laughs> Well, you know, just look at it on the bright side, not for him, but for you. It may not be the adjustment disorder. You just may be that way. Yeah, well, it could be. <laughs> Maybe my true colors, Sean, because to. of the pandemic, my true colors beamed out of You're me. You're not supposed to agree with that at all. You're supposed to go like, no, I'm the princess. I'm the queen. All right, well, I'm right, the so. queen, but. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> drop the mic. Drop the mic. There it is. Okay, so uh, Queen Page, <laughs> or, or should I say QP? So anyhow, so Queen Page. So um, when it when it came to you going back to work, what kind of 
support did you get from the nurses there in your work staff? You know, I made sure that right from the hop, I told everybody what was going on. I had so many people remind me, oh, like, you don't have to tell them what happened. Nobody yeah. knows why you're away. Yeah. Everyone thinks you're off work because you're doing school. Yeah. And I was like, why would I hide this? I'm such a huge <laughs> mental health advocate. Like the last thing in this world yeah. I'm going to do is hide the fact that I'm struggling with mental illness yeah. and like freaking stifle the nurses that much more. I'm not going to be embarrassed about this. I'm going to like push forward and tell everybody about it. And that's exactly what I did. Oh, good for you. Good for you. And so, um, it's been how many months since the diagnosis? Uh, it'll be like 11 months now. Cause yeah, it was January 20th ish. So yeah, getting close to 11 months. In that time frame, what has been the biggest or one or two biggest adjustments that your boyfriend has made in living with you because of the disorder? That's really hard because we moved in together and then the pandemic hit. So it's really hard to know <laughs> what adjustments happened. So, 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 technically, <laughs> so technically, you have pandemic boyfriend. You, you haven't seen the other part of... Uh, of living with you without being under a restrictive uh, COVID restriction. Correct. But I mean, so, hey, if you're going to test a relationship, get a significant I think mental I was illness gonna... and a pandemic all just meshed into one. If you can survive yeah, that, your life's good. You're gold. But both, of the situ <laughs> but both of the situations, and this is obvious, it's obvious what I'm about to say after I say this. I'm going to say this first, and then it is, it is clear that both of those circumstances, the disorder as well as COVID, we're outside of the realm of your control. Absolutely. Yeah. Would mean that he is only doing what he's always done since he met you is that, you know, for guys, we don't always throw the L word of love out there because the word like is the same as love to us. Mm -hmm. If women, if you don't know that I'll do a show and explain it all to you, the behind the scenes of what guys actually say and think. So he obviously likes you, which means in woman speak means love. So he must really love you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This he man is must, seriously, you know, when guys do that, when they when they get to that point, it's like, man, you can't do no wrong. It's like you could you could be 900 pounds and he's carrying your purse for you going into the store. Oh, yeah. Like, He'd be thrilled. It, it, yeah. I'm just saying he He'd loved <laughs> the disorder. The disorder was was something that crossed your path. And you've been uh, you've been very forthright. But I got it. I'm going to dig a little deeper on something because sure. I need I need your perspective. If someone's out there right now and they have no clue that they're dealing with this, what would you recommend that they need to do? That's hard because there is so little research on what you're supposed to do. So from my perspective, the two things that helped me the most was counseling. I did um, um, EMDR, which is a rapid reprocessing thing. And I did exposure therapy. So if you think that you're going through something like adjustment disorder, I would recommend talking with your physician, go to your family doctor, or contact somewhere that does counseling and ask if they specialize in adjustment disorder. And then they can talk with you about it. You don't need a diagnosis of adjustment disorder to go to a counselor and work through that. Okay. I am so sorry I couldn't control myself by smiling while you were talking no. about something going to. Smile I thought, away. Because I, I happened, I was, I've been looking at you the whole time, and then the screen caught my eye. Do you see the screen? Somebody put up on the screen just when you were talking uh, that they used the Q word for you there, and I just think that's really cute. They called you the queen, and with an exclamation and mark. And I love her, and I love and, her. And you, you have a whole row of cheering section for you as the queen. And I think now it's very important that you get a shirt that says that if you don't have one already. I do. I really do need oh, to get one. Goodness, <laughs> oh, I thought you already had one. I was going like, whoa. No, no, no do I do need, need to get one. But if you get one, you got to give him a shirt that says king. Yes, that's true. He is my king. Oh, I okay, just adore and, him. And then you got to find somebody that, uh, do you, if you got a pet, you got you to gotta call it the Joker or something like that. Because every king and queen needs a Joker to make them oh, laugh. Oh, I've got two morbidly obese cats. Like, <laughs> there you go. There's like, Joker one huge. and Joker two. Okay, I'm sorry. 
I just for the fun of it, because I just told somebody today I did a pre-show and they about the cat, and I said, no, I want the cat in the show. No, really, I do. The cat is cool. The cat <laughs> is no problem. He is in my where is closet. Where the, where the cat? Where the cat? Where the cat at? I want where the cat at? He's oh, like, my goodness. He's oh a giant. My, oh, my. He's just that, in my closet sleeping. <laughs> what are you doing with that cat? What are you feeding that cat? I don't know what he gets himself into. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now it, wait. Now it's the cat's fault. <laughs> of course it's the cat's fault. They do the right thing. That cat is huge. <laughs> He's huge. Yeah, his you sister's guys, a little less big, but she's still oh, around. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Okay, I see. That. So, so are you saying then that you leave out an entire trash can full of food for them when you guys yes. are gone, so they can just come no? In I just and leave eat. it at all times. I leave a giant like dog feeder of cat food, and they get wet food at night. So it is my fault. I was gonna. <laughs> you, trust you, you don't have to admit it. I think everyone that sees this will go like, I think she's doing that to the cat. Her. Herb, look what she's doing to the cat. But they're so happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. All right. So let's let's look at it from your perspective. The cat is happy, and you get to laugh at the cat. So I think, yes, that is kind of good. Now, if the cat... Beautiful cycle. Did, yes, the beautiful cycle. The cat didn't have that. You would be sad for the cat, so you feed it more so that... Oh, so obviously, the cat has adjustment disorder because yeah. the, cat, the cat regulate itself. He can't. Well, he can't no. regulate his stomach. Well, not sure. if you're putting the food right there. So when it comes to when it comes to regulating oneself with this disorder, how did you go through your counselors in the process of doing this? What were the what what was the treatment like? What were the tools that they gave you to to start regulating again, or does it just kick in by itself and they just keep an eye on you? Oh, it definitely didn't kick in by itself for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what happened was, um, as soon as the incident happened, I phoned the counselor I had before and I was seeing her just like as a regular touch base. I yeah. truly believe that right. counseling is self care. So I would go just like do a brain dump with her and feel better. So when I called her this time and I said, this happened at work, I feel like it was it. My brain is acting in a trauma response. I want the EMDR. So that's the okay. eye movement. Um, I'm blanking on the rest of it, but EMDR, Google it. I have not Googled it. So Wait, that I, I got a good one for you. I got a good one for you. I know what e e EMDR means as well, but I always forget the D. So I was no help. Yeah, <laughs> I could, I could look it up right now, but for the fun of it, I'm going to let everyone that sees this, Make fun of us together because yeah. I'm not. Because it's a re it's a rapid reprocessing of and like it's a... almost like a hypnosis thing. It's kind of okay. cool, let, but let, yeah. let, let's not go down that road anymore because we're just we're just shooting ourselves in the foot for yeah. everybody to get to watch this and they get to make fun of us. But I just want to say for those of you that are here now and that may know what the D is or make fun of us or whatever, we really don't care because we're gonna move on. To something, whatever else you say. So, 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 so you, that's part of the treatment. That's what yeah. you went through. So we that was not, the start. Yeah. Right. That was the start so, of the treatment. And then her and I also went over a lot of different options I had to kind of ground myself. So that was very much the senses for me. So I had like oils or candles that would help kind of calm me. Um, right certain videos that I liked watching, like pimple Ooh, popping. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> you wait, wait, wait. What was that? Again? Wait, no, no. What was that again? Pimple popping. <laughs> <laughs> Something is wrong with you, child. There's oh, there's millions of us. We're called Papaholics. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Oh my god, okay. Wait, did you ask your boyfriend to do that? You go like, okay, I need some regulation here. No, he, watches I, I ate me. he watches it with me. <laughs> I so want to interview him to find out. I, you know what? I want all the other people you work with to hear what he has to say to live with you. Oh yeah, that, no kidding. That, they, they, so that every time you go to work, they're going like, no, we saw what he said, honey. We know all yeah. about you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, oh, yeah, I've right. got no shame. But also ASMR, yeah. which is um, also really cool visual and um, like listening tool for like regulating. So if anyone has never done ASMR, I highly recommend YouTubing, YouTubing it. Okay. <laughs> or or go to someone, or or they can 
go to someone that actually does it. I think it's buffering for a second here, everybody. We're going to wait uh, till she comes back, which means, of course, you're everybody was stuck with me for a moment. I feel like one of us is frozen. Uh, well, I'm not frozen anymore, I hope, but can you hear me at least? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Uh-oh. Oh, we go. I hear Somebody, you now. I can hear you, you now. Get, are you getting a phone call or is it just me or whatever? Okay, so can you hear me now? Okay. I sure so, can. Here, we are into the home stretch. I am not using. I have not used any of these cards because there's nothing on them that to, to ask you. But I am going to say this before we have to uh, to go. You are a brave young woman with an excellent ability to express yourself. But you gotta tell us a joke before you go. <laughs> Part of your oh, skit. Let me think of a good anything. one. I don't, every time we talk, I'm going to do this. Plus. You're gonna. She's like gonna be. She's gonna be on. I'm buying you some time. I'm talking. So I. Uh, so she. She's. Uh, Paige is gonna be on the Boom eighty six. Uh, I forgot what day. Uh, it's the twenty fifth. I'm looking at it right now. I'm going to be taking a break after the twenty fifth. Uh, I've got tons of shows uh, lined up after that and before that. But Paige, I had decided Paige was gonna be the last show I do before uh, uh, the twenty sixth, and, and uh, I wanted to end it with Paige being goofy. And uh, hopefully she won't do any of her ninja stuff uh, from Canada, <laughs> Canada and hit me way over here because we're in the same time zone. Uh, but, Paige, I have bought you enough time by talking and talking. So Paige has been here, talked about adjustment disorder. Paige is going to be leaving. We have a few moments before uh, I'm going to be pulling the plug on this puppy because uh, my buddy Paige is going to be with me on the Boom 86, which is my other page, my music-related page. I've just asked Paige to come up with some type of comedy thing because she's a comedian. And we have been talking seriously, kind of, not really, because, you know, how much serious can you talk to me? So, Paige, I bought enough time to give you as much time to come up with something. And hopefully uh, I'm not frozen too much over there. Uh, and we get some signal in here in a moment for Paige. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining in. We are coming to the end of dealing with Paige. Paige, oh, are you still there? Paige, you there? I'm back. I'm back. Okay. I, I'm so not the joke. I've, I'm I've kept talking. I kept talking to buy you some time. Go ahead. Make All me right. laugh, Paige. All right, friends. <laughs> Being a nurse can be a little rough. Sometimes people are mean to us. So I've come up with a life hack. If you're being a jerk, I mean, I have to take your temperature. And if you're being mean to me, I'll bring the rectal thermometer. And I'll put it in your mouth. Oh, you're just wrong. I have just wrong. <laughs> okay, I, I, I went from one clinch to a different clinch when you said that. <laughs> uh, you know what? That joke clinches it for us today. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> uh, okay, now look. Have a good day. Enjoy your time at work. I want you to know I'll be thinking about you uh, being at work and not boy, oh, doing that kind of stuff on people. But the headband is cool. You, but you got it. It should say queen across there. I don't know. It should oh, that would be amazing. I'm not sure if my, pa my patients would like it, but I mean, they're okay with the Lulu sign. Wait, <laughs> the, the, patients, the patients don't count. It's the other coworkers that count. If you oh, walk yeah, in, they'd be queen. thrilled. They'd be thrilled. Oh, would they? Okay, all right. They I should be, write they queen would... on my mask tonight. Queen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I only answer. What did you say? I only answer to. And then queen. That's what they probably say. would. My patients generally <laughs> like me, so they'd probably be like, that's hilarious. Yeah, we're doing okay. it. <laughs> you're, you're a very strong woman. You've endured, as a young woman, you endured adjustment disorder. You are a survivor of it. That's the way you put it to me when we talked about it. But I am going to end this before the signal goes bad, and then we get to both be frozen talking. And so I'm not going to do it. Do you like that? That's kind of, I made that up. That's a new, it's a new dance. I'm going to. <laughs> All right, I'm out of here, Paige. Thank you so much for doing this with me, and I will see you soon. Be safe driving Will out do. there. Always a okay, pleasure. Okay, talk to you soon. Ciao. Bye. Bye.